Welcome back to Survival on Purpose coverage of the 2018 Blade Show. Here with Craig, what's your last name? Roost. Roost. They call me Rooster. Rooster with uh, the best sideburns in America. And we're going to talk about council tool axes. Um, you know that I'm a Boy Scout. I like me some axes and sharp stuff all together. Yep. And what I really like about council tools is they are made right here in the USA. Um, drop forge, handcrafted, just high quality America made stuff at prices that are not what maybe not as, as crazy as you might think sure. for a USA product. Sure. And just good quality stuff. How long has Council Tools been around, by the way? So they started in 1886. And they're out of, they're still out of Lake Waccamaw, North Carolina. Still okay. family owned and run right. for 132 years. That's pretty cool. I, I think it's cool anyway. So what I thought we'd do is, I don't know a lot about axes except I like them and I like chopping stuff with them. They're very handy to have. But um, Craig knows a lot about axes. He's a design consultant and, and just he knows a lot about them. So what I thought I'd do is, first of all, you got like three different lines basically at Council Tools, yep. and then there's some changes that you made this year, some improvements that are that are brand new for the year, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, all so right. just you take it away. Sure. Take it away, okay. Craig. So we've got uh, two premium lines. One's called the Velvet Cut line, which is basically more North American patterns. Um, it's 5160 steel with premium handles, and one of them would be like this one. This is a uh, Hudson Bay belt hatchet. It's a pound and a quarter. Uh, 5160 steel, very uh, very lightweight, um, and this is actually inspired by the Norland Voyager that you no longer can get anymore, and so we basically made a bigger brother of that vintage axe. Okay. So what's what segregate? I mean, yeah. what sets the, the velvet cut line apart? So the velvet cut is a uh, premium steel, and they're finished with like almost like a, a satin look to them, mm -hmm. and they have a, a premium handle. It's a really good grain orientation with no run out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you look at this grain on the end of this handle, I don't know if you can even see that. It is, you can see it, it is like exactly perfect what you want in an axe, right? Yep. You want the grain as much as possible yep. in line with the head. Yep. And you also want to continuously through the head, through the handle, so that we don't have any diagonal run out. Because your run out is worse than grain orientation. That's where it breaks. That's where it breaks. Yep. Right, okay. Yep. The other uh, premium line that we have is called the Woodcraft line and this is a woodcraft pack axe so this is more of a um, bushcrafters style axe um, this is also 5160 even though it's not cleaned up it comes with a 25 degree flat grind a phantom bevel to help it release a 90 degree spine to strike a ferro rod start a fire cool. and a hardened pull because not there's not a lot of axes nowadays that still have hard poles anymore and and so you can drive in tent stakes or whatever you need with Sure. Them. Or release the hitch on the truck, whatever. Okay. If yeah. it's frozen, but seriously, I mean, I use uh, use this one day to drive concrete stakes on a job site. Wow. Yeah. So it, 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 it's when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You heard that experience? Yeah, yeah, I do that. I have it. So, what, what is, so from the Bushcraft series, I noticed the handles seem to be a little thinner. Um, yep. That laterally. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit of flex. Yep. Yeah. Give it a little whip to it. Yeah. Yep. Really comfortable yeah. feeling. Yep. And then what? Then you have, I guess, a standard line. Yeah. So our standard line. Some of our axes on our standard line have actually been, I don't know if we we'll call them upgraded, but changed. So we're no longer painting the heads on some of them. We this used to be painted red, um, and now we're going to go with a regular forge finish, um, relatively sharp, hung proud. Let it stick out a little bit so mushrooms over with a wood wedge as opposed to the old aluminum wedge. So we're calling this our new sport utility line. So it's geared towards the avid camper, um, a bushcrafter, um, the landscaper, tree trimmer, whatever guys that actually use their tools for work and for a living. So what's the um, what's the advantage of you said hung proud? Is that what you said? Yeah, hung proud. So when you drive that wedge at the top, you actually cause the two sides to mushroom over. Gotcha. Can you yeah. see that there? It mushrooms yeah. over. And that helps with head retention so it doesn't come off. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. As opposed to if it was flat, then you're just asking the expansion of the wood inside to hold right. it. So something I've heard that maybe you can answer that you're you because we talked about you talked about a hardened hardened hard pommel. Pole. Pole, pole, pole. Yep. So I've heard from the Boy Scout manuals <laughs> from over the years that you're not supposed to hammer with that because it can spread the eye. That's true. Um, if you're going to be beating on something and you're going to be wailing on something, yes, yeah, sometimes that you will get the uh, the weight of the blade, the inertial energy will, will come down when it stops and it'll cause the eye to expand. Right. These eyes are actually pretty thick. The eye wall is pretty thick right. on these. And the blade really isn't that thick, isn't that heavy. If you were to jump up to something like this, 
then yeah, all that extra weight, there's three pounds of the steel in the front that's going to cause that eye to bulge a little bit. That but it's sense. it's over long periods of abuse. You got to beat the heck out of it. Right, right. So driving in a couple of tin stakes is not going to no. hurt your axe. No. So no. for all you internet Nazis out there <laughs> that don't want to just just that's the way that you heard it from an absolute pro. <laughs> Thanks. And um, so which was the most popular axe you think right now? So right now this 24 inch pack axe, um, the Woodcraft line, is the most popular. And I think that it's a combination of the overall length. It's still packable, and all the features that come with it, especially that flat grind. Uh, to mm -hmm. me, it's almost like a, a chisel on a stick. Yep. I use it for limbing, driving wedges, and I actually timber frame with it too. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I like the, the woodcraft design. Kind of, if you need to, I mean, you can get up and carve with it or whatever you need to yep. do. You can get your hand up in there like that pretty well. So. Everything from shave to carve to split, chop. I mean, it's easier to list what it doesn't do. Yeah, that's true. That's good. So. And we could talk about head shapes and all. That's a whole different conversation. True. Way, but but um, and maybe we can do that at another time. But, but I just wanted to. And all your. So one more thing I just noticed. So when the, when, if, if you buy a council tools axe, does it come with a with a guard, a mask? So all of our premiums either come with a mask or a full sheath, depending on which one it is. But our sport utilities come with just basically a rubber guard just to protect for shipping. Okay. Um, because we want to keep the price low, if we added right. sheaths for everything, we'd yeah. be asking an extra 15 or $20 right. yeah. on it. Yeah. So, so we're trying to be more economical. Um, and there's plenty of places to to buy aftermarket you know, right. sheaths that'll fit these axes. So from the um, from a price range, like low to high, where does like the, the um, sport utilities, where do they start? The sport utilities start at around 48 and go up to about 50, 55. So that's our range. For an American made. For an American made. Max. Yeah. That's a good deal. I 1060. Mean, yeah. 1060 and that's, not, that's not some fiberglass handled Chinese. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Right, right, right. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a sharpened sledgehammer. It's a real right. axe. Yep. Yes, sir. That's yes, pretty sir. cool. And then you, you can go up beyond that to just some really nice custom axes. Sure. Yep. You know. Yep. Our, our woodcraft pack axes. Wait, wait, wait. They run about $150. They run about $150, um, and they come with a mask. You can upgrade to a full sheath and sling for crossbody or back carry. Um, and then you can go all the way up to a four-pound Dayton velvet cut, which is around a $200 price range. So, so that's a lot of steel. That is a lot of steel. It's also still a little under probably European. The, 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 the kind of, I guess, the, the boutique axes that are real popular for a lot of, a lot of bushcraft type people. Um, and, and you're getting American quality. At a really fair price, and putting it, American people are working. Yep. Yeah, we're trying to be competitive, thing. not only on price but in product. Um, we're basically trying to take it back from the Swedes. That's good. I think you did. You're making a big step towards doing it because I, I like to buy American when I can, especially when I can get the same quality. And this looks like some really, really good stuff. So, very great. good, Brian. Thanks Brian, for thanks. taking time. Thanks we for stopping by. We might be taking a look at one of these on the channel sometime soon. Just a little sneak peek, but. Thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. My name's Brian. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time. I learned something. Well done. I didn't know you could beat the heck out of them. Or not beat, you know what I mean. Well, let's put it this way. Um, on this one, I use a nylon head hammer that weighs three and a half pounds. Yeah. And I'll lay that down and strike the end of it and I use it as a chisel for my old timber framing. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Timber framing is an art, man. I like that. That's pretty neat. Famous? This is the boy's axe, right? Yep. We got a 28 and a 24. Okay. So for me, so what here, here's the theory on the shorter handle, okay? So this is technically is a short, small felling axe. Okay. It's yeah. meant to be all the way out there, okay? Yeah. For felling or whatever. But when I want a limb, my target isn't this big anymore, right. it's this big. Right. So what I do is I choke up a little bit for my accuracy, okay? Right. But in this position, my lower hand yeah. is right there. So now if I put my hand in the same position, now I'm utilizing the palm swell for my right. grip. Right. And my accuracy is the same here as it is if I'm choking up. That's okay? cool. Yeah. But I can still get a really good swing on this. So just by shortening four inches or one hand, one full hand grip gives me that much more accuracy. So I feel more comfortable, safer. I'm working safer. I'm being more efficient. That's cool. Yeah, that's good.